and she had thou kept silence or denied what thou confessest, thy fault would be no less plain by such a judge as it known. But when from a man's own cheek uh, breaks forth condemnation of his sin, in our court the will turns back against the edge. Nevertheless, in order that thou mayst now bear the shame of thy wanderings, and another time, hearing the sirens be stronger, lay aside the sowing of tears, and hearken, so shalt thou hear how my buried flesh should have directed thee the other way. Never did nature or art set before the beauty so great as the fair members, etc. Um, the passage is extraordinary because it helps us to gloss retrospectively uh, what was a fairly mysterious allegory in uh, Purgatory. You remember where Dante meets the sirens or dreams of the sirens. Um, and then a lady appeared. The siren is, uh, was an allegory of a temptation, an erotic temptation, someone who wants to lure the pilgrim and promises happiness. You remember? I'm, I'm going to make you happy. You, are, you need to go nowhere else. Uh, and now, uh, uh, and then we, there, was, there was also the appearance of uh, uh, a mysterious woman, an equally mysterious woman, who manages to um, uh, send away uh, the, the, the siren. She, she wakes up the pilgrim, and the journey there can, can continue. And uh, if, if you recall, we were saying, well, we don't know who this mysterious woman is, though there are a number of hints. I had read this part of the poem before you have, probably. And, and, uh, uh, and it's Beatrice. Beatrice, so it was a kind of an allegory of the confrontation of two women, the siren on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, this unknown, mysterious Beatrice. Now this scene just uh, makes it clear, because what Beatrice says, you have to make a confession in case shame, now bear the shame of thy wanderings, and another time hearing the sirens, be stronger. Lay aside the sowing of tears and hearken. Thou shalt hear how my bearded flesh, and so on. So she is now glossing the scene of, uh, of the siren that appeared in Canto 19. But there is more to it. Because there's a little phrase that Dante is using, uh, another, or Beatrice is using for him, another time when you hear the siren, which means that the siren is not just the encounter with the siren, it's not just an event that happened in the past, it can happen all over again. Another time, in other words, it can still happen in the future, which means that Dante's conversion, which is really what this poem has been telling us, especially now, which uh, the, have, has reached this kind of autobiographical quality, is not over and done with. That it is a conversion has to be understood as an ongoing journey, and that the future itself is fraught with temptations, just as much as it was fraught with, fraught with temptations in the past. What Dante is changing is the Augustinian idea of a conversion or that takes place once and for all. And is making, is replacing that paradigm with a different paradigm, a paradigm of a conversion in its openness to time, with the idea that it is an ongoing process. So you have, uh, look at what the, 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 the poetic technique is. Dante is remembering a scene of the past and glossing that, the encounter and the temptation of the siren moved away, dispelled by uh, the arrival of Beatrice. Now Beatrice is talking once again about the siren, another time, meaning I know who she was in Canto 19, of, in the dream of Canto 19, she may come back again. Uh, in other words, once again, this is the anti-pastoral imagination of the poet. Do not believe that you can ever stop on the way. Do not ever believe that there are truths that are going to be unchallenged or untested in time. And I think that this is a way of uh, truly uh, casting Dante for what he is, the poet of, uh, uh, the poet of uh, uh, open to the power of the future and, and drawn to the idea that the future is still uh, part of his, uh, his experience.